Kimi Raikkonen has had a fantastic Formula 1 career, with plenty of wins, podiums and pole positions. But as his Ferrari career is now coming to a close, I just want to answer one question. Has Kimi Raikkonen in his career underachieved or overachieved? And in this video, that's exactly what we're going to answer. Now, as we are now at the end of 2018, Kimi Raikkonen's Ferrari career is almost over. As he's moving to Sauber for 2019 and probably 2020 as well. But for me, Kimi Raikkonen hasn't had that bad of a 2018 season. Yes, there has been races where he has shown why he's being replaced by Charles Leclerc for 2019, but has also shown why he is still one of the greats on the grid. For example, his pole position lap at Monza and his race win at Cota. Absolutely sublime and fantastic drives from the Iceman. And I think 2018 has been his best season probably since 2013 or even 2012. As for most of the season, he has been consistently in those podium positions where given Kimi's speed, that's about where he needs to be. But of course, that is not enough for him to keep his seat at Ferrari for 2019. But again, 2018 for me has been good, and these stats prove that. He's had one race win at the US Grand Prix and one pole position at the Italian Grand Prix. He's also had 11 podiums and has 236 points, and currently lies third in the World Drivers' Championship. And for me, the most impressive part is the amount of podiums he has got. He has been very consistent at doing that. So for 2018, you probably could argue he overachieved. But what about Kimi's entire career? Well, now let's take a look and go all the way back to 2001. That's 17 years ago. That just shows you how old Kimi is. Where he was driving for Sauber, where he's going for 2019 in his first year in 2001. Now I think considering how inexperienced he was at the time, he did overachieve. Because before he came into F1, he didn't do many car races at all. I think he only did about 25 to 30 at most. And then came into F1 and was very impressive during that season. I will say though, his teammate Nick Heitfeldt was very close to him. And I think Heitfeldt in 2001 did have a very underrated season. But I think Kimi did just about enough to earn a seat at McLaren for 2002 replacing Finnish compatriot Mika Hakkinen at that team. Now 2002 was quite an inconsistent year, mostly because of reliability problems which really affected Kimi. In the first half of the season he had so many car failures and at one point retired in six consecutive races. So in 2002 he was quite unlucky and he almost got his first race win in 2002 in France but was denied. Again as he got very unlucky. As when leading at the end of the race, the oil from a Toyota caused him to go off the track and Michael Schumacher then took the lead. But in 2002, I think Kimi did just about enough in his debut year for McLaren. Then we come to 2003. The first time Kimi challenged for the World Championship. And in my opinion, he did deserve to win the title in 2003. Because say compared to Michael Schumacher and Montoya, he was the most consistent in that season. At most of the races, he was always there in the top four getting the points needed. And also picked up his first race win of his career at the Malaysian Grand Prix. Where he won the race by over half a minute where he just dominated. But the reason he lost the championship was because of unreliability at just one race. Where at the Nürburgring for the 2003 European Grand Prix, he got pole position. And for the first half of the race, he was comfortably leading until his engine failed. If he had won that race, he would have won the championship by about 9 points. And again for me, he did deserve to win that championship, so for me, he overachieved in 2003. Because the McLaren car in 2003 was probably the third fastest car. And it wasn't even a 2003 car, it was an updated version of the 2002 car. But still ended up only 1 point away from winning his first world championship. That is very, very impressive. The next year in 2004 though was not good because mostly the Mercedes engine in the back of the McLaren was so unreliable having failure after failure after failure in the first 8 or 9 races of 2004. He did manage to get one race win at Spa which is his favourite track of course but 2004 was so disappointing considering how good 2003 was and I still think Kimi did well with the amount of problems he had. I'm surprised he didn't go mental with the amount of problems during this season. But that unreliability would continue to bite him where it hurts in 2005. Where again he went for the World Championship. 
but lost out all because of poor reliability again. And I think Kimi deserved to win the championship in 2005 as well. During the season, he was the fastest driver and had the fastest car. If only it was as reliable as the Renault of Fernando Alonso, he would have won the title. And these stats just prove how he was so unlucky. Despite not winning the championship, he had 7 race wins and 6 pole positions. Again, just showing how quick he was and the McLaren car was. And also had a very impressive 12 podiums. But the stat there on the bottom just tells it all. He had 8 reliability issues affecting either his qualifying or race result. If he only had 2 or 3, I think he would have won the championship. Now considering he pushed Alonso very hard still despite the reliability problems, he still overachieved in my opinion. Because Alonso still had to wait until Brazil to win his first world title. So again for me, Kimi overachieved. But then in 2006 it all fell down again. As not only was the McLaren still unreliable, but the car was just not fast. As Kimi did not win a race in 2006, neither did McLaren. That was Kimi's first winless season since 2002. And this would be his last year with the team. And in my opinion, the reason Kimi left was because of the unreliability. And I guess he just could not trust McLaren or Mercedes anymore. So left the team to go to Ferrari. And replace Michael Schumacher, the seven-time world champion. And in Kimi's first year, he went on to win his first world title. Even though I don't think Kimi actually deserved it. As I think Lewis Hamilton was the best driver in 2007. But Kimi capitalised brilliantly on Lewis's problems in the last two races to go and win that title. And this is what he did in 2007. He picked up 6 race wins and 3 pole positions. With 12 podiums and 110 points. Even though I don't think he deserved to win the championship it was still a good year from Kimi. But this championship was very unlikely for Kimi going into the final two races as you can see here. With two races to go he was 17 points off Lewis Hamilton. And remember back then for a race when you only got 10 points. So for Lewis to beat Kimi he only needed 4 points. That's why it seems so unlikely for Kimi to win. But amazingly clawed it back at the end of the season and won the championship by just 1 point. From both Lewis Hamilton and Fernando Alonso. Despite my thoughts on whether he deserved it or not that is an unbelievable comeback. And is still right now Ferrari's last drivers world champion. But I have to say after 2007, Kimi just really disappointed. The next year in 2008 he was looking good but then didn't go on to win the title. Because in the last few races he could not find any consistency. Then after a poor 2009 for the team, Kimi left Ferrari and left F1. And went to do some rallying and some NASCAR. But then came back with Lotus in 2012. And proved he still had it by winning one race in 2012 at the Abu Dhabi Grand Prix. And I think for a comeback year he definitely overachieved because again he'd been out the sport for two seasons. And still showed he was one of the best drivers on the grid. As he finished third in the Drivers World Championship. 2013 as well was also a good season where he got another race win. Winning the first race in Melbourne. And Kimi was very consistent in terms of getting podiums in 2013. But had a bad end to 2013 where he did not have the pace and did not participate in the final two races. As in 2014 he was going back to the team he won his title with. And partner Fernando Alonso at Ferrari. But 2014 was such a terrible year. Probably one of the worst years in his entire career. Kimi though for 2015, 2016, 2017 and of course 2018. Did improve to get plenty of podiums and eventually a race win. But considering how good he was early in his career it just wasn't good enough. And overall since his comeback I think he's underachieved. He's had seasons like 2012 and 2018 where I think he's overachieved. But overall again between 2012 and 2018 again it just has not been good enough. But despite that Kimi has had a great career. He has 21 race wins and 18 pole positions. With over 100 podiums. And of course the one drivers championship in 2007. Now I think people underrate the amount of podiums that Kimi has got and just how important that stat is. To get over 100 podiums just shows why he is one of the greats. And for me is one of the top 20 drivers of all time. For me he should have ended up with two drivers titles to his name. But unreliability of course stopped that. So then for Kimi Raikkonen has he underachieved or overachieved in his entire career? Make sure you comment down below what you think in the comments. 
for me he has overachieved. And it's only really for one main reason for me. Kimi Raikkonen has never been the fastest or the best driver. And definitely has never had the most talent on the grid. But still manages year after year to get podiums and the occasional race win. And as well just look at the early part of his career where he should have won the title in 2003 and 2005. Even though Kimi was the best driver in those seasons he probably wasn't the most talented or the best overall. But through sheer consistency and just raw pace he got so close to winning those titles. Also for Kimi he has rarely had the best car or a dominant car. The only time he had the best car was probably 2005 and maybe 2008 and probably this season as well. But for example McLaren had the third fastest car in 2003 and it was only an updated version of the 2002 car. And even when he won the title in 2007 the Ferrari was not as fast as the McLaren and was certainly not as fast as Lewis Hamilton but still got up there and got the result. So for me Kimi has had a brilliant racing career. And hopefully has a good year at Sauber for 2019. Where I think he's probably going to surprise us. Which is something Kimi has done in his career a lot. But when it comes to Kimi leaving Ferrari, what is he leaving behind? Or I guess, what are Ferrari going to miss? One thing of course is the massive amount of experience he has. And I think that vast amount of experience has showed in 2018. Because as his teammate Vettel has been crashing, Kimi has kept his head together. They don't call him the Iceman for nothing. And that's why he has that nickname because he keeps so cool under pressure. And that is something Ferrari may miss in 2019 if Leclerc is not ready yet or if Sebastian Vettel is still making basic mistakes. They're also going to miss out on the way Kimi supplies data back to the team. Kimi is very good at this. He's always been good at collecting data whether that's in practice or in pre-season testing. And a lot of the time you actually see him performing better in practice than you do in qualifying or the race. Because he is again very good at supplying data back to the team. And has at least most of the time been very good at setting up the car. That is something Ferrari will definitely miss in Kimi. And to be honest I wouldn't be surprised if Kimi was a test driver for Ferrari say in 2021. Because he would make for a brilliant test driver with just the way he is. But when it comes to the sheer pace Charles Leclerc just looks better. But Kimi in F1 has had a brilliant career. But as I've said it's not over yet. As in 2019 he goes back to where it all started at Sauber. And maybe that's where his Formula 1 career comes to an end. But anyway guys that has been it for this video. Don't forget to hit the like button and subscribe for more content like this. Don't forget guys I'll be back tomorrow with part 2 of the Ferrari battery issue explained. As well don't forget to join our Discord link below in the description. Also with my Twitter and my website. Comment down below what you thought of this video and comment down below in your opinion has Kimi underachieved or overachieved in his career. Please comment down below what you think about those topics and until next time it's been me Chazzer HD, goodbye.